All right, hello everyone. All right, so I'm going to be showing the uh, how to use a form and repeating section um, within Workflow or Nintex 4 Office 365. Um, seen this request come up a lot of times, and so I wanted to do something really simple to showcase how this works, um, how to actually use a repeating section, and then the next piece of that would be how to actually set up a workflow to pull the repeating section data out of that. I'm going to be using a responsive form because it's easy, quick, simple. Um, and so what we have here is I've already um, set up a list. The list has a series of columns and then you can look at the SharePoint columns here. So it has a title, repeating section, flight, and price. And so the use case around this very simple is I want to have the user or enable the user to submit their name and the flights they want um, and the price for the flight. And in exchange for that, I'm going to take the one list so they have to give up the three options. And what I would then require is within the three options, I'm going to split those out and create child items or child flights based on that and then compute the price accordingly. Um, so really easy to do. I'm going to actually bring this over, um, formulate this really quick, uh, can do a repeating section here. And then I'm going to bring flight and price into the repeating section. Um, in theory, no attachments are needed for this, just a quick example. I can also, let's move this over, move this over, and then also center that, actually move that back over one, center, let's see if that looks good. Um, I also could do, if I wanted to do, I could actually do this, a total value here, knock this over to the right, and then squeeze it down some, and this would be the total price. So, pretty easy to do here. I'm going to go ahead and create a formula for this, and this will essentially be the sum of, oops, wrong thing, runtime functions. I want sum, the sum of, why is that doing it there? I want to give me the value of price and property, name controls, price. So sum of price, essentially give me the total price for that. And of course, I want to recalculate that and put that as a currency. Why not? Yes. Really easy to do, not connected to anything. Don't really care. Just something to output there, total price. All right, so let's look at that really quick. Preview this, new form. And what we should see really easily is we have names. So I can put my name here. And then flight, I can do SFO to Seattle and the price, say $5.99. As an example, add new row. There's a couple of things I can do here as well. So I'm going to do Houston. I actually don't think that is for Houston, but I'm just going to put it in there. So you can see price is already adding up. And then we'll do like Texas um, to Honolulu to somewhere else. I don't know. You see, yeah, why not? So really quickly, actually do that. So really quickly, you see this is working. Everything looks good. Next thing I'll do is I'm going to tweak this really quick because we can. I believe we can do that. Oh, it's not available inside of responsive. Okay, so, so let's just try this really quick. Yeah, it's right there. Um, add. That's what I was looking for. Um, that's a button, so I don't really need that. Repeating section, we do need to name it. So this would be called flight. And we don't need to give it a title, but we do need to have a name on it so we can actually capture the data from it. So flights there. Good to go. All right, so let's save and publish this form and jump over to workflow. Now, I have already have a workflow built, but I'll walk through this um, workflow so you can do that. Actually, that's one other thing that I meant to do here. We need to connect this to the repeating section. That has to be done, so um, we need to connect that to the repeating section. And let's repose that. And that will push the information up to that. So while that's being saved and published, 
workflow what I'm basically going to do is I'm going to query the information from the list I'm going to count it give me an index so I know how many times I need to actually create how many items or how many flights three five two depending on what it is and then I'm going to get the prices and I'm actually just outputting it you don't have to do this but I'm doing it for the sake of just kind of documenting it as I see the workflow moving and then I'm doing a for each so basically for each count or each flight I'm going to get the information for the flight and then the information for the price and I'm going to output that I'm logging it so I can see it but I'm basically going to output that as a create action item and the reason for or create list item so I'm creating a new list the reason for this um, is I could do multiple things with that information I could update an existing item I could create a new document I could run a particular workflow I could do all sorts of things because I have the individual pieces now set out or separated so let's look at that in action I'm going to go ahead and just republish this one more time this is published it's going to close and let's take a look at this so I'm going to create a new one so you see I have test data in here already so I'm going to create a new one and I'm going to call him Richard I could also tie this to um, Uh, I could tie this to Active Directory as well if I needed to Oops. and do that. But anyway, so Richard's going to go from Seattle to Honolulu because he wants to get on a vacation, $6.99. And I just hit save, which is great. Not what I wanted to do, so I'm going to go back in and edit that. Um, that's fun. Hit the wrong button. It happens. So, can I not edit this? There we go. Alright, so I'm going to add another flight because Richard is not done with his travels. He's going to go from Honolulu to San Francisco. And that's going to cost him $700. So $700. And then he's going to go from SFO to Charlotte. And that will cost him $1,200. As an example so cool so we see total price there all right now we're going to save this i don't have the workflow starting automatically we can see the workflow is not published so i'm actually going to kick off this workflow on this particular item so workflow here and the workflow that i'm doing is test repeater so i'm going to just kick that out and what we will see is that the workflow will actually start running and it will so Here's something that's interesting to note. This is what happens with the repeating section. This is why it's important to tie the repeating section data to a multi-line text field. So the data is here. If we go and look at the details on this, uh, we will see that it actually outputs XML um, into the repeating section or into the multi-line list. So this is the data that's coming out for repeating section and so one of the other things to note on that is that you will need to have some level of understanding in how to actually strip out that XML so I was using codify code beautify for that so what you can do is come here grab this information and plop it in here when you do that you will want to actually pull out this information first and that way you have a preset of information on how to actually get to your uh, actual nodes inside of the XML and if we go back to XML you, you can actually see that here using regex well not there query here so using regex is how we're going to do that and if I plop that in here I'll show you how this works so we'll go repeating da repeater data tests so it tells me it's giving me everything here so if I go then go to items and then test you see how it's starting to strip everything out if I go to that was price item so the individual item that's correct so now you can see this giving me just that item but the item is returning the flight and the price and in this case say I want just flight so now it's returning flight and what I can do is I can grab the inner inner string which is just going to give me this the text or I can get the outer string which gives me everything and I can do the same thing for price 
so pretty cool so i have this done inside of the workflow so that's what's happening already and i'm kind of building that out so let's look at this again actually let's hit a refresh here and see if the workflow is running as it should and i believe it is so it is so if we look here we now have the main one we created and we have three new flight price flight price flight price so it created three items as a result of that let's look at the workflow history just to see what was outputted there as well so we can see that it grabbed the entire collection and grabbed for flights and price and then it outputted each one so it ran as it was supposed to pretty simple easy to use and all you have to do is import both of these into your tenant along with the uh, list that is attached and you can actually have this up and running in no time if you want to check out a quick form with the repeating section and using a workflow to get the data out of the section and create child items from that you can do the child items in the same list um, I would recommend actually doing it in a different list um, just to keep conflict away especially if you have the workflow that's starting automatically um, when a new item is created you don't want to necessarily have it to start on this same item when you're creating an item so particularly putting it into a new list would be beneficial but other than that your choice on how you want to do it the structures here frameworks here pretty self-explanatory let me know if you have any questions and um, good luck with using repeating form sections and getting the data out of that um, into different lists inside of SharePoint.